Um, first off, hats off to Notre Dame. They came in here and they beat us. Um, there was really no way, two ways around it. Um, to the Aggie fans, I thank you. Uh, thank you for showing up tonight. Thank you for making this a really special day. You deserve better, and we didn't give it to you. And so we'll go back to work, and we'll continue to, to drive this thing to become the product that you guys want this and deserve for this program to be. Um, you know, in terms of the game, you know, we lost the turnover battle two nothing. That's not going to lead to a lot of successful games. Uh, we had some really critical penalties in the first half uh, that I thought ended some drives when we we had some things going in the second half and the third quarter. We really struggled to get into rhythm on offense. Um, you know, we put the one drive together to tie it and really just could never go out there and, and get things going consistently. And then defensively, I thought the way we defended the run was really poor. And so we gave up almost 200 yards rushing. Um, you're not going to win football games in this conference doing that. And so we could go figure out how to fix it and get it better. So from there, questions. Second row, Brent. Mike, I heard you say during the game that Connor needed to relax. Uh, what does he need to do moving forward a after tonight? Yeah, I, I just think we got to we got to go back to the tape and we got to figure out uh, how to put him in better situations to get him comfortable. Um, you know, the, the challenge tonight was they were going to play us in man all night. And, you know, so there's not a lot of easy access throws to get him comfortable and get him in rhythm. People are going to have to win to do that. Um, and we just we weren't able to get it going and it seemed like whether it was him missing, you know, he had a chance to hit no on the on the big over route and kind of overshot him by a little bit and got the pick. Um, um, or guys not getting the separation that we needed to get. Um, it's just one way or another, we just weren't able to get it done. We tried to do some different things to create some rubs and picks, and um, that didn't get it going. And um, yeah, it just it was really, really hard because he was he was not in rhythm, um, and and there was nothing easy to get. And so we kept trying, we kept trying, we just couldn't get there. Front left, Olin, and then Sam. Yeah, Mike, speak. You you. you spoke about the uh, uh, run defense off the top of your head just right off the, the field do you have any any thoughts any theories what the problem was and especially on that that next to last scoring drive from Notre Dame went 85 yards yeah I mean there was I mean it was a, it was a litany of things I thought we could have done a better job up front controlling the line of scrimmage for sure uh, you know we missed fit some things I think that created some of the large runs um, you know, there was some some crack replace situations where we didn't show up the way we needed to, and then on uh, the two long runs, we just missed tackles and, and missed tackles. I think on the, the first touchdown that got him to the 13, I think we missed three tackles um, with guys that were right there and could have down the football. And we didn't get it done, uh, and then on the last one, we missed the tackle in the hole, and the kid scored it through because we were in zero trying to sell out to stop the run there. So um, there wasn't much defense behind the first line. So third row on the right, Sam. Mike, uh, what did you think of your offensive line and how it held up against Notre Dame's defensive front? Yeah, you know, it, it didn't feel like the pocket was dirty. It felt like we had time to throw. It felt like we were able to get a little bit going in the run game. Not, not a ton, but we were able to get a little bit run going in the run game. And so, um, yeah, it certainly felt like that was a little bit more neutral than it was, you know, them having the complete upper hand. Second row on the left, Alex, and then down front. You know, knowing you needed to score a touchdown at the end of the game, did you feel like you needed to be in passing situations even though you had all three timeouts? Um, well, we ran it on the second and 10 to get it to, to fourth and two. And then on fourth and two, we called the play that we thought was the best play to get us the first down. We certainly felt like coming out in the drive, we wanted to kind of get going with the throw game. Um, and then, you know, again, on the second and 10, we or the third and 10, we did run it. We got the eight, got it down to fourth and two. And we just felt like that fourth and two was, was the best way to, to get us the two yards and you know we just didn't get it done front row right travis in the second half the little heavier rotation of wide receivers how much of that was your plan how much of that was just trying to get find a guy who might could get that separation yeah probably a little bit of both you know i think as it as it started to go on and, and the heat and the mugginess out there and, and you wanted to just try to keep guys fresh and then um again you're just kind of trying to find a rhythm of of who can get out there and, and get the separation that we need to get the thing going you know, the ESPN cameras caught uh, Connor getting sick. Was that just a matter of the conditions outside or something he brought into the Yeah, game? no, that just was him. He just, in the in the heat of the moment, got a little bit sick and puked and rally. Second row on the left. Coach, how was facing Riley again, and how did his uh, rushing potential affect you all on the defense? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it wasn't fun. I, I knew it wouldn't be. Um, he made a bunch of big-time plays. He made a play on the third and five. He made some runs on the last drive. Um, he did what he did and, and you know made enough plays to win the football game. Uh, told him I loved him after the game and, and you know I'll be rooting for that kid for the rest of his life. Coach back behind the lights in the middle, Tyler. 
What did you see from Le'Veon Moss tonight? Kind of what are your expectations of him moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I thought again, it was a, it was a, it was going to be a challenging night running the football. There was there was going to be seven people in the box pretty much every single snap, and so um, yeah, I thought for the most part he, he pushed the pile forward. Um, I thought he ran hard. Um, yeah, we got to try to figure out how to get him a little bit more space to get him going a little bit better. Um, you know, but I thought for the most part he he did what we asked him to do. Staying back on the far right, Ben. Uh, Coach, defensively, y'all were you know really good on third down for most of the night, for all the night, two for twelve. Um, but they you know did have a couple drives where you know they weren't necessarily third downs, but they can you know especially the first and twenty five coming out of the hole. What did you see that they were able to kind of do to just in those fine moments kind of make those plays when they hadn't necessarily been having that success throughout the night? Yeah, I, you know we were we were really really bad off schedule tonight on defense. Uh, you know, second and eight, the second and ten. I think when we go back and watch the film, I think is going to be one of the worst down and distances of the night. And um, you know, I think we got to look at what we're doing. We got to look at how we're challenging throws. I think we got really soft in our coverage in those down and distance. Um, you know, almost like you know, we kind of got on our heels a little bit because we won first down, um, and that's the exact opposite of what you should do. Um, you know, again, we we were aware of it, we were trying to get it fixed and corrected, we just we just couldn't get it done, and so um, you know, ultimately, you know, but ultimately at the end of the day, we had them third and five backed up and had a chance to make a play to get off the field and didn't do it. And I think at the end of the day, that's the turning point in the game. You know, we've got them third and five on the twenty yard line. Um, and we don't we don't get them off the field. And I think we get them off the field there. You know they're punting us, and we've got the ball with a chance to go down and win it. Um, we don't make that play, and then all of a sudden they get some runs going, they get some rhythm. That kid makes a great catch on their sideline, and, and you know next thing you know they're they're lining up in field goal range, and so they hit the run. Third row on the right, Sam, and then Alex, you wrap us up. Mike, going back to Connor getting comfortable. How much of that do you attribute to, like you said, receivers not being able to get the win, but also is there some of that attributing to first live game in a new system and getting acclimated? To yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's all of it. Uh, you know, when you when you go look at it, it's going to be, you know, the plays that we called and, and making sure that we're doing the right things to get kids in the right spots to be successful. It's going to be Connor delivering the ball in the right spots on time. It's going to be receivers creating separation. It's going to be the old line protecting. You know, there's going to be a breakdown on every play that ultimately leads to the success that you're not having for. And, and so, um, you know, what I told the guys in the locker room is, is, um, you know, for us to get this program over the hump, we're going to learn, we're going to have to learn how to put ourselves in position to play the game the way we need to in those moments. And we just didn't do that tonight.